President Joe Biden says the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar by Israeli troops is a good day for the world. Speaking upon arrival in Berlin, Biden said, now was the time to move on. He called the killing an opportunity to free Israeli hostages held by Hamas and end the year-long war in Gaza. Biden said spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from Air Force One about next steps. He told reporters he was dispatching U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to Israel. U.S. officials expressed measured optimism that Sinwar's death might breathe new life into ceasefire talks that have failed to produce a breakthrough. Good day for the world. We got, I'm told, he's here now to congratulate him getting soon more. He has a lot of blood in his hands. American blood, Israeli blood, and others. And uh, I told him that we were really pleased with his action. And further that, uh, now is the time to move on. Move on to move toward a ceasefire and God make sure that we move in the direction that we're going to be in a position to make things better for the whole world. It's time for this war to end and bring these hostages home. So that's what we're ready to do. That's what we're going to do. And I'm sending Tony Blinken to Israel, uh, I guess he's going in five days, four days. Four or five days, and he's going. I talked with uh, Phoebe about that. We're going to work out what, what is the day after now? What, how do we secure Gaza to move on? Thank you very much. Do you feel more president, sir, about the ceasefire? I do. Do you have a sense of when you will end the war, sir? President Joe Biden has long believed diplomacy is about personal relationships, and he'll spend Friday in Berlin with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz as his time in office is on the cusp of ending. There is also a planned meeting with other leaders in the European Quad, a group that in addition to Biden and Scholz includes French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre described Biden as having a close relationship with Scholz, who early this year helped broker a multi-country prisoner swap that brought back to the United States the journalist Evan Gershkovich and former Marine Paul Whelan. 
The German leader told Biden before the deal in words to the effect, for you, I will do this. But Biden's whirlwind trip starting on Thursday is hardly just a social visit. The United States and Germany have been the largest two sources of aid to Ukraine as it fights to repel a Russian invasion. And with less than three weeks before the US presidential election, Biden also feels obligated to ready allies for the possible return to the White House of Republican Donald Trump, who has antagonized US friends while displaying an appreciation for Russian President Vladimir Putin. The administration said Biden has no plans while in Europe to meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, but the two spoke on Wednesday about additional military aid, with the White House announcing $425 million in assistance, bringing the total support to more than $64 billion over two and a half years. In addition to Ukraine, Biden and Scholz plan to discuss European Union relations, democratic values, trade and technology issues, global supply chains, tensions in the Middle East and security issues in the Indo-Pacific region. While in Germany, Biden will also meet with its president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier. Earlier this month, the US president had delayed a trip planned to Germany and Angola in order to oversee relief efforts ahead of Hurricane Milton making landfall in Florida. He now plans to go to Angola in December. Mr. President, sir, Mr. Biden. Donald, sir, Donald Trump What's says, sir, Donald Trump says Paris is the worst vice president in history. You know, this is a Donald Trump, man. Is it a mistake for her not to go to the house?